Hello, I'm Anna Amelia from Northeast Animal Rights in the UK. Welcome to another one of our short talks on all things vegan. Today we're continuing along our topic on the dairy industry, um, the disastrous dairy industry as I'm going to call it, um, and also, also the beef industry which is intrinsically linked. I'm going to go through a few things. I'm going to go through the um, like the history of my lifetime, the disasters and crises associated with the, with the industry. I'm going to address some of the, um, the so-called vegan lies we seem to be spouting, which triggered a US dairy farmer in our last video. Um, and I'm also going to give you the, uh, where we get our research from, so you can go away and check the facts for yourself. You don't have to take what we're saying as gospel, but what I would say is check your facts. Um, you know, we have a very good reason for, for doing this. We, we want animals to stop being killed. The dairy industry wants to continue killing animals and continue making money, which is why they will continually attack us and say that we are spouting lies. Apologies in advance for re referring to notes throughout this, uh, this little talk, because obviously there's a lot of facts and figures for me to remember and dates and things, and I can't remember them all, and, and I'm doing this obviously in one unedited talk. Okay. So in my lifetime, in the 1970s, um, there were butter mountains and beef mountains and milk lakes, all of these um, you know, bodily um, fluids from, from cows and the body parts from animals who were killed, and a lot of them went to waste because they couldn't be used, the, the, uh, the industries were overproducing them. Obviously, at the same time as well, there were, there were green mountains. Fast forward to 1986, we had the BSA crisis, mad cow disease it was called, and people will remember the, the awful pictures um, in the news, um, the films and videos and, and the news of, of dead cows being hoisted onto the backs of trucks on top, being, being piled on top, on top of the um, of, of other bodies, bodies of cows as well. The BSA crisis cost um, the lives of 4.4 million cows. Then we move forward to 2001, um, foot and mouth disease was discovered in an Essex slaughterhouse. Um, six million cows and sheep and bulls and pigs were slaughtered for this crisis. The last um, outbreak was 2007. In 2007 as well, there was also a blue tongue uh, outbreak. Now I'm going to go back a little bit to 1992 to mention that the Protection of Badgers Act came in, into, uh, into law. So that was 1992. So in the middle of all these different things going on, the protection of badgers, our indigenous speech, species, these beautiful animals here. Okay, these were protected in law. Okay. Now in 2011, badger code plans were put in place. Um, to, to try and stop the spread of bovine TB. Again, bovine TB was causing problems in the cattle and uh, you know in the beef and the dairy industries, and they needed a, the industries needed a response to it. So they ended, so they um, they decided to come up with plans for a, a, a badger call. Now I'm taking a lot of these uh, this information from the Badger Trust. Obviously, the Badger Trust is a highly respected specialist expert in their field, and they obviously have um, a vested interest at, in keeping um, badgers alive but also in, in, in telling people the, uh, the facts around these badger calls so people can, re can realise how spurious this ba these badger calls have been. Now, um, according to the Badger Trust, the um, bovine TB is largely spread with intensive dairy and beef production systems. 94% of BTB transmission is from cow to cow. It's not from badger to cow. So 90, 94% is from cow to cow. DEFRA, who is the organization who uh, the government organization who is responsible for overseeing the badger call says disease rates are currently stable so in 2022 um you know many many years after the badger call was was introduced the, the the rates of infection are still stable they're not reducing so despite all this, this slaughtering of animals it, it's still stable so that that should tell you an awful lot as well clearly it's not working between 2013 and, two, and 2021 37% of our indigenous population of badgers were, were killed. That's 143,241 animals were killed by, by trapping and shooting, um, by free shooting. Um, these animals were killed, 143,241 animals. It's expected between, uh, by, by 2025, so only a couple of years away, that between 48 and 72% of our badger po population in the UK will be killed. Now, out of those 142,000 I mentioned there, 343,000, um, there was, in, a, in 2013 and 2019, 102,349 were killed by the coal. Out of those 102,349, only 900 postmortems were done, okay? So, you know, you're talking about a, a vast amount, you know, 101,000 were just killed and there was no postmortems carried out to, to find out whether they had they were, they were infected by bovine TB. Of those 900, 
less than 5%. So that's around 45 animals actually had BTB. So out of those, if you can, if you use that, that same formula, use the same 5% uh, figure on those 143,000 which were killed um, in those few years, that means only 716 animals had bovine TB. 142,000, 525,000 didn't have. So they were killed and they were not infected. Okay, so, so that is, you know, all these animals being killed and very, very few are actually being tested. It's a very, very, very small amount being tested. And again, out of those small numbers being tested, a very, very small proportion actually have bovine TB. And bovine TB is the reason for these badger calls. Um, now, I'm going to address some of these lies here now, so if you just bear with me. Um, this, this, um, this dairy farmer took exception to the fact that he, he said initially, enough with all the lies. Dairy cows aren't good mothers. Male cow calves are not shot, they are raised for beef. And, um, and we don't abuse our animals. And this is all typical vegan lies. So I'm going to kind of just go through some of these, these things that he's, um, he, he kind of raised for us. So he said dairy cows aren't good mothers. Now we know, and we, we, we know this um, from, from lots of sources, we know this from ex-dairy farmers who have taught us, we work with ex-dairy farmers, and some of our, our ex-dairy farmers are the strongest advocates because they know the truth, they know what goes on in dairy farms, and they, can't, they couldn't stand for it any longer, and they are now powerful advocates. I'm talking about people like Rebecca, Rebecca Knowles, um, and Jack, Jackie Norman, and who's um, you know, one of the, um, the advocates in vegan FTA in New Zealand. Um, we've talked to people who are in slaughterhouses, who, who work in slaughterhouses, and we know that, um, that there's loads of issues around, uh, around dairy cows. But going back to the, the fact that he said that dairy cows are not good, good mothers. In the BBC expose recently about, um, on Panorama about the dairy industry, one of the things that, that dairy, the dairy industry cannot get away from is they know that the separation, from, um, the separation of mothers from the calves is really distressing for the mothers themselves. Um, and also for the public, seeing that they know that um, you know human mothers can 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 um, can empathise with that. Animal Equality has carried out a number of um, of, of investigations on dairy farms, and they they filmed cows and their babies calling out for each other. The mothers calling out for the babies, and the babies calling out for their mothers. You know, and the hours after they are separated, searching for each other. Many mothers will try to stop the farmer from taking the baby away by putting themselves into, um, you know, in between the, um, the, uh, the calf and the, uh, and the farmer or the farm worker or chasing after the farm, um, after the farm as the calf is carried away. Now, so this is, so this is uh, in, in, uh, in response to um, this, this particular um, gentleman in, in the US um, saying that dairy, dairy cows are not good mother. And really, that's kind of like a bit of a meat argument because, um, you know, why should we still decide, why should we play God and say that because we think, because that particular farmer thinks that dairy cows aren't good mothers, why should we continue to impregnate, you know, artificially inseminate the, uh, these, these, uh, these animals, allow them to, um, to have the pregnancy, produce the baby, give birth to the animal and then take the cow away. Um, to me, if you have, you know, an instance of dairy cows being not and not good mothers, you would, you know, you would, you would keep a close eye on that particular animal. You don't. We know that this is not um, right across the uh, across all this breed. Dairy cows are not all good, bad good mothers. Um, now I'm going to talk about um, another one. He said, "Male cow calves are not shot the race for beef." Well, we both kind of agree on that because now the recommendations are that um, that cal calves are not shot on farm. However, they are killed. They are sent to, uh, to slaughter. Male, male calves cannot produce milk and therefore they're useless to the, the dairy industry. Um, in a 2020,000 20, report, 60,000 male calves were, were shot on farm, but we know it's been, um, you know, it's, it's been called the, the, um, dairy's dirty secret and retailers have started to implement new rules and these, were, and these came into force by the end of 2021. Although a lot of the, the shooting on farm has been banned by the majority of retailers and dairy producers, that's the majority, not all of them, the fate of these animals has not been changed because they're still being killed. And, and 65,000, this is, this is a rural payment agency, so this is not uh, a vegan organisation, this is a rural payment organisation, this is a, an industry organisation. 65,000 male calves less than, less than a month old were, were killed in abattoirs in 2021. So these are still babies, okay? Now, you know, we get accused of, uh, of humanizing these by using terms like babies, but actually these are a month old and bearing in mind the animals, um, the cows will live till the 2025, 2025 year old. These are still very, very young animals. 
The dairy industry also slaughters pregnant cows. Now, this is something which animal equality, uh, which I'm going to mention that, um, you know, people find particularly abhorrent. You know, it's bad enough that they're killing baby animals, that they're killing um, young, very young um, female call, uh, cows, but they're also killing pregnant cows as well. And people struggle to believe this in the UK, but thousands of cows are killed in the UK every year while they're killing their baby, while they're carrying their babies. And some of these are still in, in their last stages of the pregnancy. So these cows um, who are carrying their calves, the calves will suffer as well. Another um, secret by the, um, uncovered by the uh, animal equality is that cows in the dairy industry are killed for cheap meat. Um, because they are, uh, you know, the few years old, they're seen as unproductive, they're so exhausted, that, um, you know, they're sent to slaughter and they're sold for cheap meat and for leather products. 24, sorry, 25% of the cows in the UK dairy industry suffer from lameness. And the reasons for this, because they're forced to stand for long periods on hard floor, improper or neglected trimming of the, of the hooves, malnourishment because they're not being fed what they would choose to be, to be fed, infections, which are, you know, sometimes can be are treated with, with vaccinations over and over again, and overall poor quality of the facilities. The fifth secret, which, um, which animal equality wants you to, to be aware of, is that many cows in the dairy industry will never see a pasture. In the UK, cows can graze, um, you know, for six months in the year, depending on the weather conditions, of course. But the remainder of the year, cows are confined in small sheds with no access to the out outdoors, and they cannot, therefore, um, they, they can't indulge in the, they can't express their normal behaviours, which is, you know, which causes them great distress. And because now, obviously, um, the industry is constantly looking for ways to increase their profits, a new system called Zero Graze is being introduced in the UK, and it's being used more and more frequently. In a Zero Graze system, a cow is not allowed to graze or be outdoors in, at all. So they are, in, are instead kept inside the fed, fed silage, which is wet fermented grass, and a high concentrate of cereal, soya, sunflower meal, and maize. 16% of UK dairy industries have adopted the Zero Graze system, and the number is expected to grow. We know that there's a, there's a really, really strong um, financial crisis going on in the industries, so they are looking at ways in terms of, um, of, of getting their um, costs down and their profits up. The dairy industry is consistently feeding us misleading images. We've said this ourselves over and over again. You see the adverts, and the adverts are really you not know, sort of lush pastures, happy cows, smiling cows, cows which are bouncing around in the fields. And uh, this is far from the reality. Over 1.9 million cows are used for their milk every single every single year in the UK. Not on every single one. And the, the 8,000 UK dairy producers, there's a cycle of suffering taking place. The, and now this is universal. This is regardless of whether you are organic or free range or you're a factory farm or zero graze. The suffering is taking place because these animals are being artificially inseminated, having pregnancies, having animals taken away. So, you know, it doesn't have to be this way. Now, um, the research I'm, you know, I get is from, um, we use um, Viva, um, in Viva Farming as well, this is a new um, part of Viva, um, and they are a very highly respected organisation in, in, um, in Bristol. We also have the Animal Justice Project, I'm wearing one of their t-shirts today, which says End Animal Agriculture, because that's what we want to do, we want, fa we want farmers to transition away from animal agriculture to plant-based systems, more sustainable systems. We also, um, you know, you can look at animal equality, which I've used there uh, quite a lot there, um, the Badger Trust um, and Animal Aid, and all, all of these organisations will have lots of, of really, really good research um, projects and um, scientific studies. So you can read these studies and check the facts and, you know, cross-reference with what you're being told from the industry themselves. But we also obviously talk to ex dairy farmers as well, people like Jay Wild, I mentioned a couple of uh, earlier on, um, you know, and organisations like Reformed and Surge, Surge who work with um, farmers transitioning from away from um, plant-based, sorry, away um, from dairy industry and animal agriculture to plant-based farming, and also farmers for stock-free farming in, uh, in Scotland. All of these crises show that this, this industry is lurching from one problem to another. Um, at the moment, I, I don't know if you notice, but I've got this cross on my hand here. Um, this is because I'm currently fasting. It's uh, it's called um, um, uh, animals first on the second. So we are trying to raise awareness of, uh, of what the animals go through. Now we do this, you know, obviously it's not very nice to, to fast and I'm kind, of, I'm kind of a little bit, I've got a really throbbing bad head at the moment. Um, and obviously I've been fasting for, um, for the best part of 24 hours now. Um, but um, we do this to raise awareness of what, what these, uh, another awful thing which the animals go through on their way to, to slaughter. 
they are fasted, so they have um, water and food withheld from them for up to 72 hours. The reason for this is um, because um, if they have food and water in the system, um, it increases the risk of, um, of transfer of disease in, in the slaughter process. Um, of course, the, by, the, the side effect of that is the animals are weaker, so easier to manage, and obviously they're producing less waste as well. And also they are, um, it, it keeps the costs down a little bit because the, the, um, they're feeding them less food at the very end of their, their lifespan. Um, but the main re reason is because they don't want to tra um, transfer the, um, the, any sort of infections from the slaughter industry into, into humans. So I mentioned there that all of these, these industry, all of these crises I mentioned, uh, BS, BSE, blue tongue, foot and mouth, um, all the, you know, the, 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 the stockpiling with the butter mounts and everything, these are all showing that the, um, the industry is just lurching from one problem to another. But who pays? The farmers certainly are paying because they have a very, very stressful life. And they are now, um, people are waking up to what goes on. So farmers are not the sort of like the, the curly family farmer industry that people used to think that they were. Um, you know, we, we understand, we appreciate, we don't, you know, we don't live their lives, but we appreciate that farming is a really, really stressful um, uh, industry, and you, know, and you have to be absolutely committed to it. But the taxpayer loses out as well in compensation. In all of these crises where animals are slaughtered, um, you know, there was a massive um, payout to all the farmers to compensate them for the loss of their animals. Their livestock, we call them animals because they are animal sentient beings. The taxpayer um, loses out again because they subsidise um, the industries to a degree that they can't survive without it. The sheep suffer, pigs suffer, chickens suffer, badger suffer, cow suffers. The environment suffers as well. Um, you know, we, we, we know that the environment suffers because of the greenhouse gas emissions, which um, the, the industry are constantly looking at trying to address. But it's just money being, it's just throwing good money after bad money over and over again, rather than look at, like, looking at the core root of the problem, which is animal agriculture. Animal agriculture has to end. So with all of these problems persisting, why don't they look at a longer term solution? Why wouldn't all the, gov the government organisations, DEFRA, the government as a whole, the polit political parties, the industry, why don't they look at using all of their funds rather than compensating farmers? To, and propping up the industry with the taxpayer bailouts and carrying out calls. Why don't they look at using it efficiently, effectively, and sustainably, and more kindly? We are today. We're doing an outreach on. Um, we, we're using. Um, we're showing people milkshakes. Um, how you can have um, plant-based milkshakes, oat milk, um, soya milk, and all sorts of different ways um, to have these treats without the without the cruelty. Um, so what we'd say is disastrous dairy. It's disastrous in so many ways disastrous for the animals, disastrous for humans, disastrous for the environment, and the taxpayers as humans as well. So ditch dairy, please leave cruelty off your plate, leave it out of your cup of tea, leave it out of your cereal bowl, look for the alternatives, and please move away from dairy. So thank you very much for listening. Um, I hope you found that interesting. Um, please keep on spreading the word, share our videos. If you like what we do, subscribe to our YouTube channel and share our YouTube channel as well. Um, like and follow our pages and please, please ditch dairy.